almost human. In the gloomy dungeon of the decaying castle, Professor Reed found them, lowered months of their creator's nightmares mind. Their robots, they gained power. The salt still more, he alone knew their dark secret, begged for pity, but plastic and metal had no pity, even if they shaped in the form that seems almost human. We are robots have one advantage over you, human professor. We do not, this would not be fatal to us. We cannot die. The village of the moorlands awakes one day as usual. English morning fog lifts suddenly a gear gape, the contorted face of a cold corpse. It's Nielsen. He looks dead. He's no, no enemies. Who murdered the poor bloke? He's dead, all right. Professor Reed. He was strangled by some brute's hands. Look at his face, fear is written all over it. But look at his mouth, his tongue a bit ripped out. But no one can come to any conclusion about the foul murder. Two nights later, another tongueless corpse is found on a third night. Minutes later, footsteps were echoed down the dark street. The police are rolling up. Blimey, they cleaned up, cut the store. Cleaned out the store of all the watch parts. It must come from the auto parts store. Someone broke in there and took all the parts too. A tale of the chilling puzzle ends with another sentence of discovery. The third murder victim, he's without his tongue. It's just like all the others. But why is, why the tongue's always taken for the bodies? Is there any connection to between these brutal slayings and the robberies. Beyond me, Professor Reed. Can't make a thing out of it. Scotland Yard's sending a top man in a day or two. There's fine. But how many more tongues of corpses will turn up before he arrives? Professor Reed, the noted anthropologist, finds a footprint of the corpse of the policeman leaves and follows it. A watch part no, normally dropped from the loot of the Probably dropped from the loot of yesterday's robbery. There's a square toed foot shoe print by it, just like the imprint I found in the corpse. There's nothing out this way except Gatesbury Castle. They've been the queer inventor retired. That's where the queer inventor retired five years ago. He hadn't been heard of an eccentric old man since then, but his footprints head straight for the castle. As a cost of rotting bridge, read. As a cost of rotting broad bridge, read. Walks as many rats scurry from the disturbed hiding places. Most looks abandoned. No wonder they're not heard of a queer, queer bloke who's set up hours here. He's probably dead. The paint of mournful creak of Doe's jaw swings open. We're in a scene of latter desolation and macabre decay. No one could live in a place like this. And it remains sane very long. Suddenly his uh, uh, focus and terror had a pile of dismembered human limbs. Arms, legs had been all sorts of fantastic butchery and taking place here. Then, uh, but then he looked close and noticed they're not human limbs. Who are you? Uh, Johnson. I live here, but perhaps I should ask, who are you as you are the intruder here? Quiddy Professor reintroduces himself as a quiet. Strange man picks up, turns up the arm. Mechanical parts, but I have sworn. Mechanical parts, but I have sworn it was like, it was even, it even feels like skin. It was a perfected, our own, playable plastic robots made here. We have funny found a plastic formula and makes a covering that looks like skin, works like muscle. Would you look here to see the almost human robots? There, are, there was an old man, rather an odd fellow, who was a mentor. The teacher was his assistant. He died a few months ago. But the knowledge that was made a human looking, but the knowledge that had made a human looking, but speaking robot. Robert speaks. Yes, when you see some of our robots do recently broke loose. They raided town stores with mechanical parts. Some murdered. We need a tongue with a recent dead man to make the robot speak. You cannot manufacturally duplicate a tongue. 
But now, robots are under control. A door opens, revealing the fantastical sight of most human-looking mechanical creatures. Then Johnson questions one. Yes, Master, I can speak once. My brother, robots, brought me a tongue. Now they are the, the, the three of us who speak incredible. There are two more beside perfect robots. They need only the tongue of a fresh human corpse, and they will too speak. Hardly believe my senses, but they are free talking robots. You used all the victims' tongues. How will you get more? I need no more need that there be no well, no more needs killing. I shall spend still two more tongues tonight on the morgue. Will you come from with me? I lay his face violate the dead. I would give up everything to see you attach your tongue and create speech in a lifeless metal shell. I shall join you. And night and midnight, Professor Reed and Johnson entered the morgue through the back window, made their way for the chamber to your interrogating corpses. Johnson, the watchman's coming. I must, he must have seen, been seen here. Don't worry, he'll never speak again. Make sure he's dead. There he is. Now take the car from his corpse. We'll find him in a second on another body on, on one of those slabs. Somebody's coming, they might have heard his scream. Forget the second time and flee. Swiftly and suddenly the murderer and his accomplice race back to the grim castle where Johnson works busy in a robot. Their tongues attached to artificial robots. Now you speak. It's almost worth of old what man, what man's murder. The witness is miracle of science. Make him talk. Make him master. Fantastic. Why these robots seem almost intelligent? You have to make the other robots. Yes, and their robots will work will, will rule all mankind. So he just a nice slick by embedding. It's sharp blood. Sonny Johnson's life, life slips, bending its sharp blade in his arm. Just as he draws his, it forth, Mr. Reed watches with shock horror. Her blood. They were cut, but you don't bleed. Yes, Professor Reed, you were right. Roberts can make Roberts. But I realise that. I no longer need my inventor. I killed him and made those robots perfect robots. No, Johnson, it can't be. Not you. You're human. You say you are. No, Professor Reed, I'm not human. But as I made these robots, so shall, so shall I make up of all humans. They shall serve the moment masters. They will not tell your secret, secret season. No, back to your mechanical, back your mechanical devils back. Let me hear swear. I'll tell them what they know. I know you want the plans for you strapping by the robots where perfect, perfection waits only your human tongue. Quickly and terrified professor is strapped in the table. Need a tongue, professor. No. Stop. Mine's are no use to you. Tongue you need must come from a flesh corpse. And it can be arranged. Remember, watchman is a great rage me to kill. In an instance, you'll be just as dead. The end.